everybody, Chris here from Project Option, and in today's volatility product guide, we're going to talk about an inverse volatility product called XIV. So what is XIV and how does it work? So volatility trading has become very popular in recent years, with many products being launched to help investors gain exposure to changes in the market's implied volatility, which is most commonly referred to as the VIX index, as that represents the implied volatility of S&P 500 options. So the VIX is very widely watched, and a lot of people want to get exposure to changes in the VIX index. Now, the only problem with that is that the VIX index itself is not directly investable. So you cannot, you cannot buy shares, you can't short shares, so we have to use some workarounds. So we can use an inverse volatility product to gain the inverse performance of the VIX. So what is XIV? Well, XIV is a volatility product that attempts to track the inverse performance of the VIX index through the inverse of the daily percentage returns of near-term VIX futures. Now, more specifically, XIV's performance tracks an, the, an index called the S&P 500 VIX Short-Term Futures Index. Now that index tracks a portfolio of near-term VIX futures with a weighted average time to maturity of 30 days. So XIV's performance on a daily basis is the inverse of this index's daily percentage returns. So let's go ahead and take a look at XIV's performance relative to this index's performance on a daily basis. Alright, so in this graph we're looking at the daily percentage returns of XIV compared to the daily percentage returns of the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index. Now we'll just refer to that as the near-term VIX futures. So as we can see here, anytime the near-term VIX futures have a negative percentage return, XIV has a positive return in the with the same magnitude. So if the near-term futures fall 5%, XIV will be up about 5%. And if the near-term VIX futures rise 5%, XIV will be down about 5%. Now, if you'll notice, there are some discrepancies in this chart with what I just said, but that's because XIV closes at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and the VIX futures stop trading at 4.15 Eastern Time. So if those VIX futures make a large move or a notable move in those 15 minutes after XIV has closed, then XIV will have to play catch-up on the following day, and therefore... Uh, XIV's returns will be different than the near-term VIX futures on the following trading day. So that is part of the reason why there are discrepancies in this chart. But all we need to know is that when near-term VIX futures rise, XIV falls. And when near-term VIX futures fall, XIV rises. So let's go ahead and take a look at XIV's performance in various scenarios. Alright, so let's talk about XIV's performance when the VIX futures are in contango. Now, when the VIX futures are in contango, all that means is that the VIX index is at a level below the near-term VIX futures. Now, as time passes, all VIX futures contracts will converge towards the VIX index as their settlement approaches, and that's because a VIX future with no future left is equal to the VIX index. So, when the VIX futures are in contango, as time passes, the near-term VIX futures will lose value as they converge towards the lower VIX index. Now, that's assuming the VIX index does not rise. Now, since XIV tracks the inverse of the performance of the near-term VIX futures, XIV appreciates as the futures get pulled lower towards the VIX index. So, since those near-term VIX futures are decreasing in value and therefore have negative daily percentage returns as they converge towards the VIX, XIV realizes positive returns as XIV's performance is the inverse of the performance of those near-term VIX futures. So let's go ahead and look at a visual to show you exactly what this means. Alright, so on the top of this chart, we're looking at XIV, and that's the green line. And on the bottom part of the chart, we're looking at the February and March VIX futures relative to the VIX index. Now, we're looking at the February and March VIX futures because those were the near-term VIX futures during this time period. So as we can see here, the VIX index starts right around 12 and a half and remains low over the entire period, ending at a value just below 11. Now, as we can see here, the February VIX future started above 14, and the March VIX future started closer to 15 and a half. So, with the VIX index substantially below these VIX futures, um, these VIX futures will lose value as they converge lower towards the VIX index as their settlement date grows nearer and nearer. So, 
As we can see here, these near-term VIX futures are slowly losing value over this time period. And as we can see in the top part of the graph, XIV is appreciating in value because XIV tracks the inverse performance of these near-term VIX futures. So when the VIX futures are in contango, that means that the VIX index is below the near-term VIX futures. And for those near-term VIX futures to converge to the VIX index, they have to lose value on a daily basis. And since they have to lose value, they benefit XIV. So this is just an example of how XIV tends to perform when the VIX futures are in contango, especially for prolonged periods of time. All right, so let's go ahead and look at XIV's performance when the VIX futures are in the opposite configuration. So when the VIX futures are in backwardation, all that means is that the VIX index is at a level greater than the near-term VIX futures. Now, as you know, as time passes, VIX futures have to converge to the VIX index. So when the VIX futures are in backwardation or when the VIX index is higher than the near-term VIX futures, as time passes, those near-term VIX futures will appreciate in value as they converge to the higher VIX index. Now that assumes that the VIX does not fall. Now since XIV tracks the inverse of the performance of the near-term VIX futures, XIV loses value as the futures get pulled higher towards the VIX. So let's go ahead and take a look at a period of backwardation and see how XIV performs. All right, so in this graph, we're looking at XIV, and then we're comparing that performance to the October and November VIX futures of 2014, and we're also looking at the VIX index. So the October and November VIX futures were the current near-term VIX futures over this time period. So as we can see here on the bottom part of the graph, we can see that before the shaded region, the VIX index is slowly creeping higher, and with it, the VIX futures are also creeping higher. Now, if we look at XIV's performance on the top of this graph, we can see that XIV is slowly decaying downwards. Now, that's because those VIX futures in the near term are increasing. Now, during that shaded region is when backwardation starts to occur. So, as we can see here, in the shaded region of this chart on the very right, the VIX index takes off from 15 and rises all the way to 25. Now, since the VIX index is now above those near-term VIX futures, those near-term VIX futures get pulled higher and they start to appreciate in value as they are converging towards the VIX. So as their settlement date gets nearer and nearer, they have to appreciate more to get to the VIX's level. So as we can see here, when the VIX index takes off and those near-term VIX futures appreciate in value, we can see that XIV plummets. So XIV starts at a price around 40 and at the lowest point reaches a price of about 27.5. So that is a 30% loss in you know just a couple weeks, and that's because implied volatility or market implied volatility or the VIX rose substantially. So if you ever buy XIV and market implied volatility really picks up, that is not going to be a trade you want to be in. So whenever you buy XIV, just keep in mind that if volatility surges from its current levels, XIV can lose substantial value in a very short period of time. So now that you know how XIV tends to perform when the VIX futures are in contango and backwardation, let's talk about how often the VIX futures are in contango and backwardation, at least historically. So this graph is from 2008 to present, and any positive value indicates that the VIX futures are in contango, and any negative value indicates that the VIX futures are in backwardation. Now we calculated contango and backwardation in a very simple manner, and that's by taking the price of the front month VIX future and subtracting the VIX index from it. So any positive value just means that the front month VIX future is at a level higher than the VIX index, and any negative value means that the VIX index is higher than the front month VIX future. So anytime the VIX future is at a price higher than the VIX index, that means that a contango state is present, and whenever the VIX index is higher than the front month VIX future, or when the value is negative, that is an indication that backwardation is present. So as we can see here, the VIX futures curve is very often in contango, and that's because we've been in a primarily low volatility environment, and when volatility is low, the VIX futures tend to be in, in contango. Now as we can see here, there are a couple periods of backwardation, but they tend to be pretty short. However, 
even though they're short, they tend to be violent, as we can see by the fact that, you know, we have readings of negative 17 and a half, which means that the VIX index was 17 and a half points above the near-term VIX future at one point. Now that means if the VIX index remained at that level, that near-term VIX future would have to rise 17 and a half points as it converges to the VIX index. Now that is a substantial rise. So what we can learn from this graph is that XIV is a frequent winner, and that's because the VIX futures are often in contango. And when the VIX futures are in contango, they are losing value as they converge towards the VIX index. Now, on the other hand, when the VIX futures go into backwardation, the VIX futures can rise substantially, which means that XIV could lose substantial value. So while XIV is a frequent winner to the long side, the losses can be substantial on the downside. So let's go ahead and take a look at XIV's performance since inception, and we'll see exactly what that means. All right, so in this graph, we're looking at the split adjusted price of XIV since its inception date in late 2010. So as we can see here, XIV has risen from $10 all the way up to around $75, or a return of around 650% in the past you know, six and a half years. So obviously XIV has very, very attractive return potential, um, but as we can see here, some of its drawdowns are quite violent. So if we look at that early drawdown in 2011, we can see that XIV traded up to $20, but went all the way down to $5. So that's a loss of 75%. And that's a function of increasing near-term VIX futures, which is a function of increasing VIX, which tends to be when markets are becoming more and more volatile, particularly, dur particularly during a strong downside movement. Now, as we can see here, XIV did rally from $5 all the way up until about $35, with virtually no issues. So XIV you know, rose substantially, and that's because we were in a period of contracting volatility or low volatility with contracting near-term VIX futures. Now again, in late 2015, we can see that XIV was trading around $50, but in one or two days dropped down to $25. So as we can see here, though XIV tends to be a strong performer over the long term, some of the near-term drawdowns can be substantial. You know, the XIV can lose 50 to 75% of its value in a very short period of time because that is the nature of volatility. Volatility tends to, you know, stay quiet for a while, but when it rises, it tends to do so in a violent manner. And since XIV is on the opposite side of that equation, XIV collapses when volatility rises. So this is just something to keep in mind when trading XIV. All right, well, let's go ahead and summarize everything that you've learned in this video. So first and foremost, while products like VXX track the performance of near-term vol volatility futures, inverse volatility products like XIV track the inverse of the daily changes in the near-term VIX futures. Now that's quantified by the S&P 500 VIX Short-Term Futures Index. Now XIV tracks the inverse of the daily returns of the S&P 500 VIX Short-Term Futures Index, which tracks the two nearest term VIX futures with a weighted average time to maturity of 30 days. Now a majority of the time, the VIX term structure is in contango, which results in falling VIX futures prices as they converge towards the VIX index. Now that translates to steady price increases for XIV. Now when the VIX term structure is in backwardation, XIV will lose value if the VIX remains elevated, and that's because the near-term VIX futures will appreciate in value as they converge towards the higher VIX index. Now, while buying and holding XIV has historically been a frequent winner with strong returns, the infrequent losses can be substantial. And that's just like any other short volatility strategy. So when you're short volatility, you're going to be a winner most of the time, but your losses can be substantial because volatility tends to spike violently. So just be sure to approach XIV with a predefined strategy if you are going to trade it. Thank you for watching this video, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the circle on the left-hand side of your screen. And if you want to check out some more volatility-related videos, go ahead and click on the video on the right-hand side.